Hi, I'm Will from Tested. I'm Norm from Tested. Norm, uh, we are here today behind the microphones looking at Mountain Ma- Lion. Mountain Lion. It's Mountain Lion Day. It is. It's it's uh, July twenty fifth. Mm-hmm. Is that the line? If you sing, if you sing, if you sing that song, we have to pay Disney. Don't oh. sing that song. Uh, it is Mountain Lion Birthing Day. Yes, July twenty fifth. Uh, Mac OS ten. Yeah. Ten point. Yeah. Eight. Ten point eight. So this is the eighth revision to OS X. Uh, we're going to run down just a quick look. I've been using it for a few... Uh, I mean, I haven't been using it for a few weeks now. Um, but I, I feel like I'm pretty comfortable with the OS. I've been using it for a while. And this is really your first look at it, aside yeah. from the Apple conferences. So. And uh, yeah, you have it installed on your MacBook Air. Yep. Uh, the new MacBook Air, Ivy Bridge. Everyone who bought one of those new MacBook Gets Airs a freebie. Gets a freebie. Yeah. Uh, if you are on Lion right now, you have to download it from the Mac App Store. And yeah. it's relatively cheap. It's 20 bucks, I think? Yeah, 20 bucks. So uh, one of the, the way they deliver that is you open the App Store, and it says at the top of the purchase list, it has uh, the, the things that are due you as part of your purchase. So like, you get iLife downloads, and now they're associated with my account. Okay. Uh, same thing will happen to anybody else who bought one of the, the new Macs in the last, I think it's anything in the last like three weeks. And you can go from Snow Leopard all the way to Mountain Lion uh, with one buy. Yeah, which is good, because I think a lot of people kind of waved off on Lion. Lion... I didn't like Lion very much. Now, why I, didn't you like Lion? Uh, well, they implemented a lot of iOS stuff uh, kind of jankily in a way that doesn't really make sense for desktop There's OSs. There's one specific example of that. The launch pad is what I'm talking about. And I, that is still here. I don't even have it on, but one of the things that they did do to the launch pad... Uh, it, whoa, that got really loud. Sorry about that. And I launched the Blizzard Authenticator somehow. <laughs> uh, let's pick that up. So one of the things that they did do is they... They added search to the launch pad. Mm. Oops. That was not what I wanted to do. Launch. Most people would probably leave this on their dock. I take it out just out because it yeah. offends launch me. Launch pad was like the, it's like the home screen yeah. uh, on iOS, but in Mac OS X. And you can scroll. I have normal scrolling on because I don't believe in natural scrolling, mainly because I use a mouse with the, with the, with the Mac. The so how does time. search work on the launch pad? Uh, you know, I don't know because I don't use the launch pad. I guess you just type something. Yeah, oh. when you just start typing, it gives you what you're looking for. So if I want to play Diablo 3... Well, I, I, it's on my hard drive, so it doesn't work. Um, but yeah, so uh, search on Launchpad actually makes Launchpad kind of use, useful. Mm-hmm. I still can't imagine actually a real human beings using this. It seems like a terrible idea. Um, next up on the list of other stuff that they fixed, they uh, there's a keyboard shortcut for Save As now. Uh, before, you had to do this weird duplicate rename uh, arc to do a Save As of a document that you had open. Uh, the software updates all come from the Mac App Store, so when you launch the App Store... Uh, if you have an OS level update, it'll just be in updates over here, which I think is kind of cool and useful. Um, the oh, uh, the other big thing that's changed is kind of an all my files view. This is an addition. It's the default view when you open Finder now. Mm-hmm. I find it to be profoundly unuseful. Yeah, why do you want to see every single one of your files? Because it's just all the documents. You, if you sort it by the recent, by the most recent uh, first, that kind of makes sense. But it's just really slow and awkward, and I'm comfortable enough navigating a file system to just jump straight in. Uh, I changed that to be my desktop, so now it opens on the desktop, which is where I, uh, what I use as my dumping ground for files. Okay, so you alluded to earlier uh, with Lion, uh, many features that were previously in iOS made its way, the ones that made sense at least, made, yeah. its, made their well, way kind of. to OS X. Um, and now you have more of those features, so such as? Uh, well, uh, so Reminders is a, mm-hmm. huge, is a huge ad. I'm going to load that up. Uh, here we go. Reminders is this guy right here. Now, Reminders uh, on iOS is basically the only reason I use Siri. It's a quickly create a time-based yeah. reminder. You say, Siri, remind me t- tonight at 10 o'clock to go do something or other. Yeah. Or to do location-based reminders. So the nice thing about this is, uh, I, you can see, I, here's my list of reminders. I left my shampoo and face, wa- face mm. wash at my parents last year at Christmas time. So now I have to remember not to buy more. Uh, so I'm going to remind, remind myself to call Norm. Norm in the morning when I leave home. I expect a phone call every day. You, you really? You want that? Uh, well, I'm just I can do that. Oh, there we go. There goes the pop up reminder. Uh, home. Uh, well, let's say when I leave the office. Perfect. There's the office. Uh, and now that'll show up on my iPhone, iPad, all my iOS devices, all the Macs. It just syncs across. I, I think this is a really good, uh, good thing. You got the notification up there in the top right window. And that I is also. It. New notifications, yeah, not no, not growl anymore. Yeah, so growl is uh, essentially killed. This is the notification window. It looks a lot like iOS. It does look very much like the iOS pull down. Uh, you'll note that there's a, a thing at the top. You can uh, we'll get to this in a minute, but you can associate Twitter and in the fall Facebook with your with mm-hmm. your Mac, and you can just tweet directly from there and get an iOS style. 
Twitter. Uh, what does that say? It's dialogue. been tweeted from. Uh, what do you mean? Like you know, if you go in Twitter, it says tweet it from uh, tweet Mac Deck. OS ten. Mac believe. OS yeah. ten. Ooh. Uh, so uh, when Facebook comes in, this will be two buttons instead of just one, assuming you associate with your Facebook account. Uh, so right now, there's a relatively small number of apps that support the notifications. You have to actually code for it. I think that uh, Sparrow does now. Tweetbot does not. The alpha version of Tweetbot does not. When they release on the App Store, it will as well. Uh, and you know, I, I find this to be not particularly useful. Yeah. Um, and nice thing is you can do a swipe from the edge, a uh, two-finger swipe from the edge, and it pops right out. So when you're on your MacBook, it's very easy to access. Don't really use notifications, even on iOS. The status bar, the notifications on the status bar are what alert me to like new emails. Yeah. So uh, you can you get that as well. I don't have any notifications on right now. But when you go in to each different thing, you can, you can set what type of notifications you get, whether you get the banners that fade away after a short period of time or alerts that stay until you click on them. The thing that we saw a minute ago, that reminder was an alert. Uh, the banners just kind of come in and fade. By default, that's what uh, iMessage uses, or messages is what they're calling it now. Um, I turned all that stuff off. And you can control it on a per app basis from the notifications control panel or system preferences pane, which is actually quite good. Uh, I find that that's, that's a, a useful Use, it's much easier than going in and controlling notifications in each individual app. And you had the reminders, like when you created that one on uh, OS X, it automatically pushed to your iPhone yes. uh, it's because you have iCloud. It's using iCloud. So you set up iCloud uh, just like on uh, iOS, basically. And you can sync everything from PhotoStream. You have to have uh, Aperture or iPhoto installed to use PhotoStream. Everything else just works by default. Uh, so you can put your con if you sync your contacts to iCloud through your phone or iPad, then you can do that. Uh, calendars, notes. Uh, notes is particularly useful because the Notes app it dumps that stuff. So it's a good way to get... Uh, uh, like grocery list from the computer. You can type it on the computer really fast and then have it on the phone. I, I'm not a big fan of how it requires you have Aperture or I, uh, iPhoto installed. For example, I like PhotoStream on the Windows implementation where I can yeah. install something in um, in the background of process and then it'll automatically populate a folder. I think that's and, much better yeah. for what it's worth. Although I, I use Aperture to manage photos, so it's less of a concern for me. The big uh, enhancement here is that documents and data can push through iCloud as well. So right now when I use something like Rightroom, it saves to a Dropbox folder and then on the on the app side, on the on the iPad or iPhone, then I just it just logs into my Dropbox for me. Now it could also use iCloud, which is useful if you don't have a Dropbox account or something like that. Uh, messages is another big enhancement. So this is replacing iChat. Uh, you can see it here. I don't think I have any personal information here. Uh, but the nice thing is, if I drop pull down this drop down menu up here, then I would have a, all of the contacts that I have for you: your phone, your email with iMessage, your AIM account, your G, uh, Google Talk your Facebook chat, all the different places that I have am connected with you are available here. And I can switch between them just by pulling down that mm -hmm. this this guy right here. I could even FaceTime you if I wanted by clicking on that guy up there. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'll probably have to cut your email address out and phone number right there. That would probably be uncool of me. Uh, this works much better than it did before. There were uh, stability problems with the beta that came out for Snow Leopard earlier this year, uh, or for Lion rather, earlier this year. Uh, I haven't had any problems with, with like lagging or lost iMessages since then, which was the which was the issue. And even um, though you have uh, in messages, you can tie it to your other accounts. You have to really recognize which account you are sending from. For yeah. example, if you have AIM uh, tied to messages and you want to send AIM occasionally, it will send iMessage instead. If you're not, it's paying. You have to really pay attention. Uh, it does change. Like iMessages are always green, I think, and everything else is blue, which is opposite of the way it is in in on the iPhone. Uh, but you can connect to AIM, Jabber, Google Talk, uh, Facebook. Those are all obviously just Jabber uh, varieties. Uh, uh, let's see. Other stuff that's come over from iOS, AirPlay streaming. I forgot to plug in the Apple TV, but when it's on, uh, you get a, an icon up in the top in the top system tray of the, of the OS, and it'll let you just pipe out your video to AirPlay. Now, this only works on uh, Sandy Bridge and newer Macs, so iMacs. Uh, I, I guess MacBook they did some last year. Yeah, did they do a Mac Pro refresh with Sandy Bridge? I don't know if they mm -hmm. did. Yep. MacBook um, Pro, not Mac Pro. Right, not Mac Pro. So if you don't have a Sandy Bridge computer, that won't work. But this is great for conference rooms. I think I think that that's the... like. I, I thought I was going to use it at home a ton. It turns out I hardly ever do because it's always better to do it from the iPad. Um, but yeah, so... You, as opposed to buying as the opposed dongle. To plugging in the dongle, just plug in one AirPlay thing in your conference room for everybody. Plug it into the HDMI and your projector and you're good to go. 
Um, you, of course, also, if you have a non Sandy Bridge device, you can still stream uh, stuff that doesn't require no latency streaming. So, video, it'll buffer a little bit. That works you know, fine. Full screen video. Full like, screen like video, iOS. stuff like that. It kind of bypasses your computer, it sends the. You can do it from inside iTunes. Yes. Anything you could stream online from inside iTunes with AirPlay will still work. Mm -hmm. Audio um, also pipes through. Audio or? pipes through as well. And it's up to 1080p if you have the current gen Apple TV. Obviously, 720p on the older ones. The nice thing is when you when you switch over, it says, hey, which resolution do you want? Do you want the resolution that's best for the TV? Or do you want the resolution that's best for your laptop screen? And, what do and you, it'll and scale you, the other okay, one so, yeah. to fit. Okay. I, I prefer the, the resolution that's best for my laptop screen and the scale for TV. Yeah, because it's going to look bad on the TV no matter what. Yeah, exactly. Um, Game Center. I, did, I haven't even turned this on yet. Let's Let's open this up and see what it looks like. I, I can't imagine anyone ever actually using this for anything on the Mac. It seems like a Not profoundly bad games. idea. Yeah, so there's my Game Center. Uh, yeah, this is great. I'm closing that. Don't care. Um, sharing. Sharing is a new thing with this. It uses the stuff that's in your account profiles. So you can set up a Flickr account, a Vimeo account, Facebook account uh, coming this fall. That, that doesn't work now. Twitter account. And then what happens is uh, from... Any of the apps that support it, and it's a kind of limited number right now because the a lot of the mountain line supported apps haven't been released yet. But you can hit this share button that's in frequent things, and you can send it with message. So you can send an S the equivalent of an of an MMS picture message over iMessage, wow. or turn a four point three megabyte photo over uh, over MMS. Seems like a great idea. Yeah. Um, or you can airdrop it, which is kind of convenient. It beats the dragging and dropping and all that stuff. But I I think posting it to Twitter and Flickr is probably the actual real use. And uh, I can just say this is a photo of my dad's dog, Hardy. That's not Chloe, bananas. It's another corgi. Oh, my goodness. And I'll send that. And it goes out and it makes the little whooshing noise and everything. There we go. And there it goes. Um, so sharing, uh, I think as more apps support that, it'll be much more useful. Uh, right now, there's a fair number of Apple apps that don't even support it, like Aperture and stuff like that. It's kind of similar um, to what we saw in Windows 8 with uh, the contracts between the Metro apps. Yeah, or the Intents that came out in Ice Cream Sandwich. It's nowhere near as powerful as either of those because you have to have, uh, it seems like you have in order to work, it has to be built into the contacts, into the accounts uh, system preferences pane. So Apple has to actually support the service. There's no intent, there's no sharing to YouTube which seems like a massive oversight. The apps have to support that themselves. Mm -hmm. So Final Cut Pro, iMovie, and that sort of thing. You're saying no directly posting to test comments from uh, no Post direct. Tablet. No, no, we won't. That that's not a thing. We okay. could do that on Windows 8. We could write an, a, a handler for that on Windows 8. We could write an intent for that on Android, I believe. Okay, Gatekeeper. This was a highly controversial con controversial announcement when they first rolled it out earlier this year. Uh, basically, what this is, it's this setting right here, right around my cursor, and it says it allows applications downloaded from the Mac App Store, so that's the default. That means you can only install stuff that's, that's on the Mac default. App Store. If that's by default. If you upgrade to Mountain Lion, you will only be able to install programs that you download from Mac App Store. Uh, well, I haven't done an in-place in 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 okay. install. So but on, on a new computer. On a new install, that's the default. Really? So you actually have to change You this. have to change it. Oh, that sucks. And it's a lock change, too. So you have to click the lock, type in your type password, password, and then change it. Um, the middle setting, the Mac App Store, and identified developers is people who sign with an Apple-issued certificate. Mm -hmm. uh, that means that you can install the app, and it doesn't give you the pa it doesn't require your password. Uh, if you hit anywhere, you can just download stuff just like on any other version of OS. Well, why can't you have like UAC where it pops up when you have unsigned developer and improve it on a case-by-case -case basis? That's essentially what happens. Okay. Except for if you have anywhere, if you set anywhere, that's what happens. It gives you a warning. It just gives you a warning. It says, hey, it does the same thing it did in line. It says, hey, this is a, an application from an unknown well, developer. Is that cool? And I changed it and haven't been hassled since. That's fine. Uh, what's next on our list? Dictation. Uh, do you want to try some dictation, Norm? Yeah, so this is a Siri-based dictation. You need an internet connection for it to work. I don't think it's actually Siri, but it uses the same right, voice the same recognition servers. stuff. Um, and you know, let's say, you know, on, on a MacBook, you have a MacBook Air right now. Yeah. How good is that microphone for dictation? Uh, so if you have a FaceTime, like one of the MacBooks that was designed post-FaceTime with, with the two microphones, it does a pretty good job. Uh, I think I have mine set to do double tap on the command key, and then it pops up a little dictation thing, and I can say... Oh, let's let's do some dictation now, Norman Chan. This is my voice being turned into words on the page. You hit done. Simple dictation thing. I can say I'll and you That's know it's good. not it's not bad. It's not great. Yeah, but it's it's it beats a snowball. The nice thing is it looks at your context. So it looks at your contacts and your location and all that stuff. I saw the guy in the newsroom doing that. In there. Oh, really? Yeah. I haven't He's watched the newsroom yet. I've been saving those episodes. I'll watch mm. them all at once. Um. It's really dependent on the microphone. It works great on, on Sandy Bridge and newer iMacs. 
it's not so good if you don't have a good microphone attached to your laptop. And of course, if the laptop's closed, it doesn't work at all. Hmm. Um, uh, mail. So mail, I've hooked up a non-private mail account here. Um, and this is the new mail client. The big addition here is the VIP list. So you can, like I've made you a VIP. Of course. That just means that you can, you can set notifications based on whether or not people are VIPs. So I don't like having notifications on for all email, but when I get an email from you or Adam or Jamie or you know uh, some of the guys at Burma, the boss basically, mm -hmm. then it gives you an instant record, uh, an instant ping. So you actually do check your email maybe faster than you. And would if normally. you configure mail here, does the notification? It doesn't apply to iOS though. It, this does not apply to iOS yet. Okay. That that VIP that stuff I think will come in in the in fall six. update with iOS six. Um, the other thing that's nice about the mail client is it, it is a full exchange client now. I haven't used mail.app in a while, so it's kind of nice to come back to it. And, and they've done some good things, which is good since Sparrow just got uh, sold to Google last week and is probably mm -hmm. going to languish and become crappy. Um, so let's see. I guess that's probably it. Oh, the last thing is Safari. Mm. So they've made Who some... Who really uses Safari? You know, I, I might come back to Safari. Oh. Bro. No, that's not true. No. It's not going to no, happen. no, no. no. Um, but they have done one thing that I think is definitely worth noting. Obviously, it supports all the share stuff that is, you know, important to sure built into to OS, native, native OS 10 Mountain Lion. Yeah, um, but they replaced the separate search bar and location bar. You're saying finally, last one's on board. Well, I think IE still has separate bars, don't they? Oh, okay. I can't remember. I don't use IE clearly. Uh, but yeah, so you can search for terms, tested 3D glasses into 2d glasses or you can just type a url in there and it works as you would expect it takes you straight to a google page or a bing page or whatever search provider you've set up it has the reading list as well that stuff that we had before um and then the last thing it does is that is that reading list and i think it kind of works offline now i don't find myself using that at all i can't imagine i'm actually going to use safari uh but it's it's a it's a this is a is a substantial change well I think. you know on ios uh you have Safari is the only renderer you can use on iOS, and while you can use other hey, browsers, a Twitter notification. Uh, oh, there it goes again. Not Growl. Uh, while you can use you know Atomic Web Browser or Chrome on iOS, it really is a Safari. That's most people use Safari there, and yeah. so you do have tab syncing now if you want that on uh, on iOS and OS ten. Yeah. So so yeah, that's that is correct. So your tabs will sync from Safari on OS ten to iOS. You can also do that with the, the Google Chrome yes. re, uh, uh, version that's on iOS now. That will sync between Android Chrome on desktop well. and Chrome on iOS. Yeah, which is, I think, much more useful. I, I find myself using Chrome on, on the Mac, on iOS as well now. So yep. um, so that's it. This is this is the high points of Mountain Lion. I think know, we... It doesn't seem like that big of a difference. There aren't that many changes. I think the big, uh, most valuable differences are uh, the, the uh, screen sharing, AirPlay streaming. The AirPlay streaming, the, the not the notifications, but I think the sharing, once, once that stuff's fully integrated with Facebook, is going to be a much better way to... Uh, share stuff with Facebook than using the crappy uh, web interface that they use now that you have to use now. Um, it, it's not a huge upgrade. I think that's why it's twenty bucks. I think if you're a Mail.app user, it's really a no-brainer. If you're on Snow Leopard, it's a no-brainer. If you're happy with Lion, probably it's okay. But stuff like Spaces is exactly the same as was before. Uh, no changes there. The gesture swipes and stuff are all still quite good. I I, I find myself liking that. They have done a, a fair number of things that I really don't like. Like they hide the hard drive icons on the desktop by default. You have to go into Finder Preps and turn that kind of stuff back on. Yeah, you want your cleverly named hard drives to show up. Exactly. Uh, I don't think that's a particularly clever name for a hard well, everyone drive. Everyone has clever thinks their hard drive name. That's clever. true. Uh, one other change is that you can you can change the order of the of the subheads. Okay. Uh, now, which is a good thing that that wasn't something you're able to do before in the quick quick access pane on uh, Finder, but it's it's not a there's no huge the iOS the iCloud integration is the big thing and the ability to dump stuff that works better with your phone and tablet is are the big enhancements. So it's a much better upgrade if you have an iPad and iPhone as well as a Mac than it is if you're just a Mac user or just a Mac and an iPhone user. Not nearly as big as a jump from Snow Leopard to Lion. Still, for twenty bucks, it's hard to argue. So. Uh, so that's Mountain Lion. It's out uh, today. Today. Later today. Yeah. If not already. Uh, you can get it from the App Store. It's 20 bucks. There's no discs or anything like that. Uh, we'll have more about Mountain Lion, though, I'm sure, in coming weeks. So for Tested, I'm Will. I'm Norm. See you guys later. Bye.